This is our second year doing it. It's, it's important to us because the league has obviously started to take more of an initiative with esports, with their gaming world championships. Uh, and this is, you know, taking it here to full sale has just been a, a huge step up in production value, everything we were doing. Uh, last year, we really wanted to get our feet wet, um, kind of get into the space, uh, get feedback from players uh, in the community. And this year, bring it to full sale with the, the staff they have here front to end, um, not just here in person, but also you know on our stream. And for those watching at home, I think it's just a night and day difference. So it's been really awesome to, to be a part of. Yeah, so I think, you know, we're still learning. That's actually some of the best feedback. Uh, you know, I think that we kind of found out that this year uh, with online qualifiers and things of that nature that, you know, we're one of the, we're the only tournament actually that across the league right now that's allowing for EU um, participants um, outside of GWC itself. Um, and so I think tweaking our brackets a little bit next year might be really valuable. Uh, have a North American bracket, uh, have a couple finalists from there, and then an EU bracket separate because there's just a uh, connectivity uh, kind of issues and whatnot when you're playing across the ocean, different internet scale. Um, so it, it's definitely going to be, I think, something that would be a positive change for next year. I think that, you know, we're, we're taking a lot of their feedback too in terms of travel. They are all blown away by this. Um, the guys that have been to GWC, like Eki, he's one of our finalists here. He says, that, you know, this is kind of, you know, up on par with that. So uh, really cool to bring it here and have this kind of in our backyard in Orlando, obviously kind of sister city across the state. So. Yeah, so skill level's a lot, <laughs> it's really high. I mean, you, you watch this game and this stream uh, with these players playing against each other, it's not like your average person picking up the game and just playing online with their buddies. Um, you know, there's so much uh, strategy involved. Three of our players, um, Canadians27, uh, Ekin45 Jr., and Eki, um, they are, they have so, a lot similar strategy, a lot of you know puck possession, trying to get the goal to move back and forth. Junior Pins is kind of a unique player um, in that regard, like for us uh, in this tournament. Uh, he's he's playing in the third place match now, so he lost against Eki, uh, but he's definitely one of the top players in the world, and he he throws the puck on net a lot more, tries to get those dirty goals, a lot more like you would see in a traditional hockey game, uh, which isn't necessarily what you typically see um, in kind of the NHL community from those professional games. Um, but kind of the way I see it, I think it's just uh, an amalgamation of kind of everything you see with social media streaming nowadays, you know, the ability to, to be involved and social media has built that community streaming in general for, uh, you know, TV, it's changed the landscape, uh, not just for traditional sports, but it's changing the landscape for obviously television, movies, um, and kind of combining that into, you know, a sporting event for the 21st century. Um, you know, that you can have that social interaction, that engagement, um, you know, and, and gaming, when I was a kid, you know, I'm, I play a lot of video games and whatnot, it wasn't, it wasn't as popular as it is now, and I think there's just been, you know, generation after generation now that video games are normal, um, and, you know, being able to participate, have that community, I think has really kind of just changed the, the landscape. I think that's a lot of why esports is, is so huge and is only going to continue to grow. There's a there's a big difference between you know a traditional sports game and a traditional sport versus a lot of those esports you know whether it be more shooter focused games or any of the you know League of Legends or Dota or any of those like I think that you know it translates really well because it's already got that broadcast quality you know it, what they're doing in there I mean the full sale staff is adding a lot of flair to it but you I mean even if they weren't there'd be a compelling nature to that broadcast type of mentality um, or that broadcast setup that we're seeing in the game which does help. Um, now, it is like you, you mentioned earlier, it's very a, a niche, like uh, a sport, and very much so a niche esport. Uh, smaller community, um, but a really, really passionate community, and we want to try to be as authentic to that community as possible. Um, not just the guys here playing, but, but those that like to watch it. So.